About seven months ago, I created an indicator called KCC percent. It stands for my name, KC, and the percent change in the closes of every bar. The idea behind the indicator came when I wanted to create a different profile for mean reversion strategy. So this indicator uses a different method to calculate the pullback in price on every instrument from the other mean reversion indicator just like the RSI. You can watch that video over here. Today I will use the same indicator KCC% percent, to build a mean reversion strategy on the futures silver market. It's an extremely simple one. I'm using the KCC indicator default. So this is the look back and the smoothing four and three. So four look back, three smoothing. And then the levels just like the RSI is 30 and 70. Now I have this condition if true. So in case when you're developing the strategy, you want to add any condition here, any filter. It could be volatility, it could be direction, anything you like. So of course, right currently we're not using anything. So when the KCC indicator is below the buy level, we will buy. And when it is above the sell level, we will sell short. Of course, uh, buy and sell short, that means we are always in the market flipping between long and short. And as you can see clearly here, so we are always in the market using this strategy. And if we look at the performance of this strategy, so it's already making a thousand trades, almost split in the middle. I mean, not almost, it is split in the middle. And making $300 on average, which is very, very good. If you are an Algo Trading Masterclass student, then you will receive this as part of the tools. And you can see the silver requires $65 for round trip for commission and slippage. So three times 65 is around $200. So 330 is definitely much better than $200. Now, if we look at the total, we are making $356,000 and uh, $81,000 drawdown. So again, that's really, really good. But you might say you probably optimized this before doing the video, which I did not. But also by chance, you could have picked the peak numbers just randomly. But if you develop a lot of strategies, uh, you will have a built-in bias because you develop those strategies, some numbers will stick in your head. And this also might happen to me here because I know those numbers usually get a good result. So in order to fight this, to fight the built-in bias, so we need to test the adjacent variables to this strategy. And here are the settings I'm using. So the look back is between two and 10. I mean, 10 is already long, but I will use it. And then the smoothing two and six, and then the buy level between 10 and 40, and the sell level for the short is between 60 and 90. So all these come up to 2,205 combinations. So we test them all. And the first thing we do is we filter. So we will not trade anything below a hundred trades. Also, I'm not using anything below 200 on average. $200 means that I am getting three times my average slippage and commission. That's really a safe number. Of course, the more, the better. Remember the total number of strategies was 2,205. And with this filter, we get 689. So 689 divided by 2,205, that means 31% of the strategies after checking all the adjacent parameters are usable, not only profitable, but usable because profitable, probably they are 90% profitable, but usable because of the average trade. So if I sort by the return to maximum drawdown, this is my custom fitness, uh, so we can see here we have 4.4 and on the lower end we have 0.14. Of course, this is not usable. So this is what I mean. I have an average trade of more than $200. I have more than 100 trades. And of course, my strategy is profitable based on my average trade. But look at this drawdown, 200,005. So obviously, this is not a usable strategy. So what we want is at least two because two, that means the total net profit is twice the maximum drawdown. Of course, we want more, 
Okay, well, let's add this filter to greater than two. And now the number of strategies is 174. And again, we bring our calculator. So 174 divided by 2205, that's almost 8% profitable strategy. So if you are new or a beginner trader, then you might think this is very low. Just to let you know, this is extremely high because if you build uh, many strategies and you test them for robustness, usually you get like 0.1% uh, robust strategy. So the fact that we are getting almost 8%, that is still a huge number and we are comfortably should eliminate many of these strategies. So now out of these strategies, let me filter the top 25. So this is 25 and with the term to draw down is 357. So let me do 351. So by 351, that should give us 25 strategies. And now let me sort to see our robustness. So this is the look back period. So starting three, remember we had two, so two seems not usable. And we went to 10, 10 and nine doesn't exist. And seven is only one. So basically we are between three and six and between three and six, number four is the most. So then I would say number four is the best in this column. And also it's adjacent by stable profitable strategy. So if I take four here, now let's look at the second column, which is the smoothing factor. If I sort by smoothing, we went from two to six. Six doesn't exist. Four, only two, and the rest are all good. But two and three are a lot. They are up to here. That's more than, uh, that's 18 strategies. So two and three here are very, very good. And then if we go by the buy level, so it's 10 to 40, 10 doesn't exist, 15 doesn't exist, and two only in 20s, and three in 25. So 30 and 35 is the stable area, and they occupy the most number of strategies. And finally, the cell level, so it's between 60 and 90, and after 75, there is nothing. So 60, a lot of 60, 65 is also really good, 70 and 75. All of them looks really good between 60 and 75. Although the, the focus will be on 60 and 65. So now if I wanna pick a stable region for all, for all of them, we start here, let's sort. So let's pick four in the beginning and then either two or three here and then 30 or 35. So this is with 35, this is with 35, and these are with 30. So we have four strategies to match them with the exit. So let's look at those in details. So this one is 1,000 trades, this is 971. This is making 50,000 more than this one with lower drawdown. And then if I go to the four, three and 30, so we have two of them, and both of these are higher drawdown than this one. So 4-2 performing better than 4-3. This looks really good. Now, remember this one, 356-640, is not the top making strategy. So this is what we picked, and this is the most profitable strategy. So this is very close to our original strategy, which is 4-3-30-70. So instead of 3 smoothing, we are 2, and instead of 30 buying level, we are 35. But we have now a confirmation that what we picked was not over-optimized or was not the peak. And that's the idea. So even at the end, if we reach the same values, what we picked is really a stable region. And this should work on many, many other instruments. So now we have this. Let's look at our equity curve. So it's not the cleanest equity curve. I mean, we are making money all the time. We are going up and we can see these green dots are making new highs all the time. And so this is end of April. We just made a new high. So this is uh, what we suffered in the beginning, a big drawdown. And then there is nothing uh, to uh, talk about here. The maximum loss here is about $80,000, which is huge. We just starting here. 
So we need to mitigate that with other filters. This is our periodical returns. Uh, we have three losses, 2008, 2015, and 2020. Now remember, this strategy is always in the market. So that's 100% exposure, which is not recommended. I mean, if this strategy is part of 25 other strategies, then it's not a problem. But if it's part of three, four, five strategies, then it is a problem. You want to limit your exposure to the market as much as possible. So now it's the part where the first sentence, remember, is if true, now you can test other filters. So you can add uh, filters like volatility, direction, patterns. You can add uh, trailing stop, uh, stop loss, profit target. Uh, there are many, many other uh, ways to limit your exposure to the market. And of course, the simplest one is the number of bars in trade. Like I mentioned, if you are an Algo Trader Masterclass student, you receive this as one of the tools. And here you can see that the silver have a range of almost $3,000 per day. So this means the silver E-mini futures contracts on average move $3,000 per day. That means if we put the stop loss or the profit target at $3,000, most likely we will hit it and uh, then we can play with these. So if we put them at different numbers, we can make sure that we hit one and not the other. And this is what I did. I put the profit target at $3,000 and the stop loss at $6,000. So most likely we will hit the profit target, but we don't hit the stop loss. And then I added the exit after number of days, which is 10. So these act as floor and ceiling, and this act as time exit. So this way we are protected that we are not always in the market. And then if we compile this, we get this strategy. So it's $272,000 with $46,000 in a drawdown. So we definitely reduce our drawdown to almost half, but of course we also lost a lot of the profits and that's a compromise that you have to decide if you want to make more money and assume bigger drawdown or you want to reduce your drawdown and accept making less money but now this is our curve it looks much better than before and if we see it with the drawdown remember the first strategy we had eighty thousand dollars in the beginning and now the maximum is about 40 which happens here when you have a lot of money, a lot of profits already happened. And then the trade analysis is now, again, we are split in the middle for long and short. And the average uh, trade went up, so 416, but we're making less trades. And the periodical analysis, one big uh, loss uh, in a year, and then medium, and then nothing to speak about. But the distribution is different. And what happens with this strategy is, it looks like it's getting better. You can see how we are uh, at uh, 52 in 2017, 58, 61, 62, 66. So you can see how the trajectory is up since 2017. That means the edge is getting better somehow. And it's either we picked it up at the right time or at the end, I don't know. But so far, this looks very, very promising. We try to be simple with our development. And in this case, we hit the gold mine because it's an extremely simple strategy and using extremely simple exits. No filters in this strategy. To learn more, make sure to watch this video and I will see you.